Hey guys, welcome back to another tipping video. Today, I'll be going through what happened in round 8 and also going through my big calls and predictions for round 9. So yeah, let's get straight into the video. So, first game of the round, Port Adelaide vs Western Bulldogs. I tipped the dogs, but the power uh, progressed and the dogs just had injury carnage. They just don't look like they're going to go all the way to that grand final again this season. My big call was Ryan to Bunters to combine for 65 touches, and I only combined for 34. This was a really, really bad one. Probably my worst ever big call. Next, we have Fremantle versus North Melbourne on the same night. Um, Interesting that they put a double header. Uh, Fremantle won the game by 67 points. Uh, won the game by 78 points, and I tipped them by 67, so very, very close there. Um... And my big call was for Freo to kick 10 first half goals, and they kicked 8. And if they're a little bit more accurate, that probably would have happened. <coughs> Next game we have is the game I was at Richmond versus Collingwood. Yeah, just Collingwood couldn't get the job done. It's a pretty disappointing result. Richmond won the game. I did tip Collingwood. So, yeah, that's another one wrong, which isn't the best start. And. My big call was for more on how to combine for eight intercept marks. And I don't think Jeremy Howe was even doing intercept marks. He had a, his opponent was like Jack Rebot or something. More got three, so yeah, it was a fail. Next game. So, <clears throat> I just want to say there's plenty of upsets in this round. Memorable wins and history-making wins as well. And. This is a history-making win for the Gold Coast Suns. What a win it was against the Swans at the SCG. Their record up there is, well, amazing. They're, it's their best record anywhere at any ground. They've got to be very, very happy with it. And Isaac Rankin's got a great record up there too. Uh, and my big call was for Rankin to kick four more goals. And that was a fail. I obviously didn't get that tip right. Next game was GWS versus Geelong. And this game pissed me off more than the Collingwood game. I tipped GWS to win this game. And I do not think GWS are playing finals this season after this loss. This big loss is definitely going to ruin their season. My big call is for Hogan and Himmelberg to combine for five goals. I only combined for two, both kicking one each. The next game was a bit of an interesting game. It was uh, Hawthorne versus uh, Bombers, which... I was going to go to, but then there was a bit of change of plans. Uh, what a comeback win by the Bombers, kicking eight goals in that last quarter. They've got to be very, very happy with that win. In the end, it was 27 points near a smashing. Um, a big call was for Hawthorne to kick four first quarter goals, and they kicked three goals, seven. That probably would have happened if they were more accurate, because they missed some easy shots too. Next game was Brisbane versus West Coast on the same night. Uh, Brisbane smashed, but not as much as I thought. And the Lions did not kick 15 goals in a row for my big call. That was a fail. They missed like five or something in a row. That was bad. Um, but I'm sure Brisbane fans will probably tell me off in the comments for this. But I don't think that win meant much for Brisbane. I think they probably could have beaten them by more. And with the injury, Daniel McStay. That's Joey McStay and Hipwood on the sidelines. Hipwood should be back soon. I think he's playing for the VFL next week, but they might pu push him up to AFL because of their forward loss. Um, they've got the Crows, who are in poor form, but I just wanted to say that Brisbane fans probably won't be too overly happy about that injury. So then... On the Sunday, which was Mother's Day, the last two games of the round was Melbourne versus St Kilda. Melbourne got the job done quite comfortably in this game, which, well, I tipped. And Gorn did collect 25 hit-outs or more. He only got, like, 16. He wasn't very, very good at that. Um, and then the final game of the round was Colton versus Crows. I predicted this game to be a smashing and then... Got come down close and well Adelaide did pull down a pretty good comeback uh, but they didn't get it onto seven goals so I got it to eight goals just not enough for my big call so yeah this is 
bit embarrassing. I got five out of nine for my tips. I tell you what, I had like one out of five or one out of six at one point, so I'm very, very lucky to have this. Um, and I'm pretty lucky to get that Bombers tip right. I probably should have tipped Geelong, to be honest. And I probably should have tipped Richmond, too. Um, and my big calls, I got zero. So, <laughs> I've got a lot of work to do for that this week. Um, so, yeah, let's get straight into my predictions for round nine, a big call. So, first game of the round, Collingwood versus Western Bulldogs. Pretty nervous for this game. Western Bulldogs have absolute injury carnage. Waitman looked like he did his shoulder or something. I don't know why he'd try and knock over Hayes and that, because he did more damage to himself than he did to Hayes. Hayes didn't even fall over. Don't know why he'd do that. They also have Vandermeer. It looked like a pretty serious hamstring, so... That's pretty nervous for him. And Tim O'Brien, uh, I think he was subbed out of the game with some sort of calf complaintment. But they've got injury problems. That could ruin their season. Collingwood are clearly, clearly not as good as people think because we have a bit of work to do after that game. We, Our defence was... Average, this is our first defence round where we've given up a big, big, big total. Um, I think our midfield was okay. We need to win more clearances. Uh, and the big problem was bombing it to you know, Richmond defenders. They were always spare out, and that was the story of the game in the end. I reckon the dogs should bounce back from Port Adelaide loss. Um, I reckon I can just beat the Pies here by 14 points. Because they have to win it, pretty much. Otherwise, their season's done. And then the big call. Dogs win contestant uh, possessions by 15 to, by fifteen or more. They have to win this stat to win the game, I'd say. So, I've noticed that. And I'm going to tip it. Because I'm hoping to get at least one tip right. One big call right this round. Next, we have four form versus Richmond. This game could be a bit of a cracker. I could stream this game, maybe. Um, Hawthorne uh, in some pretty poor form, actually. They haven't won a lot of their last couple. And again, they just did what they did against Sydney. They just dropped off against the Bombers. They kicked eight of the last nine goals or something like that. It was amazing. Uh, Richmond did very, very well in that game against Collingwood. Tom Lynch is in red-hot form. And actually, I think they'll win this game quite easily, quite quite comfortably, by 16 points. And um, that's actually going to be my big call. Lynch and Rio Walter combined for seven goals. They have been pretty good. Well, Lynch has been good, pretty good. So then we have North Melbourne versus Port Adelaide down at um, Bloodstone Arena. Port Adelaide, I don't think I played there for a little while. This game could be cracking. Then again, it could be smashing. You just don't really know with this. Um, I think Port can win this game still. Um, they're coming in with some good form. Freeland's on the trot now on that second half against Colton was very, very good. So they've got amazing form. North Melbourne, yeah, they just keep on getting smashed, don't they? And this, I don't think it'll be a smashing. Port Adelaide to win the game by seven points. And Wines and Amon combined for 60 touches and a goal. I reckon they'll dominate down there in Bloodstone. So then we have St Kilda versus Geelong at Marvel. This could be an interesting game. Then again, it could be a smashing. St Kilda have lost their last two games now after winning their after winning five in a row. And they sit about mid in the top eight. So they'd be hoping to get the win. Geelong, I think, are just above them. And Jeremy Cameron is absolutely flying. And I think he can have a big game here again. Geelong by 29 points. And Cameron and Hawkins to combine for six goals. Next, Sydney and uh, Sydney and Essendon. This should be the game of the round. I reckon, because it's always a close one, Sydney drop their game against the Suns. You never know. This could be a really, really good game. I reckon... This could be a two-point win to the Swans, another close one. And the Swans to kick five 
or more goals than behind. I'm going to make sure I watch all of this game. It's going to be so good. Next, we've got Adelaide versus Brisbane. Brisbane have coming off some good form. Then again, they do not have Hipwood. Uh, they do not have uh, McStay or Danaher. I'm, I don't think they're going to risk playing Hipwood this week. Uh, it's just too big of a risk. I still think uh, I Adelaide's been smashed two weeks in a row now. And again, it's a loss to the Giants. There's another smash, smashing against the Giants happened last year that ruined their season. Looks like this year it's ruined their season because they've got some pretty hard games coming up, the Crows. This game could get out of hand pretty quickly. But I reckon um, with those forwards out, I reckon Brisbane will only win the game by 36 points. If, if those forwards were in, it would be like 70 points. But Adelaide to kick five or, or less first-half goals for me. I don't think they'll do very well in the first half. Next, we have Sydney versus Fremantle. How good are Fremantle doing? They're on top of the ladder for half of that round. They just look so, so good. They're playing brilliant footy. Their defence is very strong. Their forward line's kicking goals for once. Their midfield's getting it done. and Well, they've got ruck coverage, and it's just so good. Uh, Gold Coast coming off a very, very good win. The critics would be very pleased after what Chuck Miller said during the week about him being... An unacceptable loss to Collingwood. And how he gave up seven goals. Well, that's just a brilliant way to respond. This could be a good game, I reckon. With Kaz Bolton ripping form against a strong defence, I reckon they'll keep him pretty quiet. So that won't be my big call. 3-0 by five points. It's up here at Metricon. 3-0 don't normally play too well up there. I'm, I'm sure they'll go up there and smash anyway. Because they're in ripping form. And Amiss and O'Driscoll, this is a bit of a different big call. They're two youngsters, and just like they're, they've both played like under five games. Come up with 45 touches and a goal. They've been very, very, very strong. And then we have GWS versus Carlton. This could be a good game. Then again, it could be a bad game. Should be pretty interesting. I reckon Carlton can win this game. Their form is ripping. And GWS, well, their season's pretty much over. And they lose this game, then their season is confirmed over. It'd just be too hard to come back. Toby Green's been good coming back for the team, but it hasn't really done too much. It's just an overall team problem, and Leon Cameron looks a certainty to be sacked at, well, the end of the year, halfway mark of the year. Probably halfway mark, the way they're going at the moment. Colton by 15 points. And a total of 25 or more behinds is scored. I reckon this will be an inaccurate game. Then West Coast versus Melbourne to end the round. And uh, no one's going to be tuning into this game. Let's just say this could be smashing of the season. I haven't really tipped an over 100 point win. But I think I have to here. West Coast are just in terrible, terrible form. Lucky McStay went down because they probably would have lost that game to the Lions by 100. They're just going to get smashed every single week now and this is this is just going to get ridiculous Melbourne by 118 points and that's my tip and D's to smash in clearances get, and get 25 or more that is a massive big call that is just ridiculous if West Coast give that up but I reckon they can do it Melbourne they're very very good at clearances watch out for Ed Langdon I think he could have a big game that I'm going to go with the clearances over Ed Langdon. It was like 40 touches and two goals and like 20 contestant possessions. I'm just going to be a bit safe under that instead of that. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time for another tipping video.